the Centennial Hall Vrosworth. In this piece, I want to look at the Centennial Hall in Vrosworth, Poland. It is a remarkable building from the first decade of the 20th century, which is a period I have focused on in several of these pieces. However, there are many other things worth seeing in Vrosworth, so I will begin with a virtual tour of some of the more interesting buildings of the city, both to convince you that it's worth a day or two of anyone's time if they are interested in buildings, and to give some context for the creation of the Centennial Hall. In medieval times, Vrosworth was for the most part a Polish city, but its German-speaking population was growing and in the 13th century its German name Breslau begins to appear in written records. From the mid-16th century it was ruled successively by Austria and Prussia and then incorporated into the German Empire on its creation in 1871. It remained the German city of Breslau until 1945 when, as a result of the Potsdam Conference, it was incorporated within the newly drawn boundaries of Poland and became known as Vrosworth. The former German areas in the west of Poland were known as the Recovered Territories to emphasise that they were once under Polish rule. Vrosworth suffered heavy damage during the final months of the Second World War as Hitler had ordered the city to be held at all costs against the Soviet advance. In the 1950s and 60s the historic core was largely rebuilt, though this was a selective rebuilding in which any building associated with the former German period was rebuilt in a Polish style. Nonetheless, the rebuilding, while not always historically accurate, has been extremely successful. Vrosworth sits on the river Odra and currently has a population of about 650,000, making it the fourth largest city in Poland. The secular heart of the city is the Rynek, the 13th century marketplace. It is one of the largest market squares in Europe. At its centre is the Old Town Hall, its glorious eastern facade containing an astronomical clock largely dating from the 15th century. The ecclesiastical centre is on the opposite bank of the Odra. This is the oldest part of the city and contains the Cathedral of St John. Churches are mainly brick built and other churches of note include St Elizabeth, also known as the Garrison Church, St Mary Magdalene and St Mary on the Sands. Vrosworth is notable for its public art. Most famous are its dwarves, small figurines which began to appear on the city's streets in 2005 and whose number continues to grow. To the south of the city centre is a remarkable sculpture at a street crossing known as the Monument to the Anonymous Pedestrians, sculpted by Jerry Callina in 2005 which is a commentary on the imposition of martial law in Poland in the 1980s. A number of buildings still survive from the early years of the 20th century, despite their being constructed by the Germans. The market hall dates from 1908 and its roof is a notable early example of reinforced concrete, which may have helped pave the way for the Centennial Hall. The former Petersdorf department store of 1927 by the expressionist architect Eric Mendelssohn is notable for its curved tower of windows on the frontage. A local architect who would play an important role in the design of the Centennial Hall complex was Hans Perlzig. His office building of 1911 is regarded by Pevsner as another expressionist masterpiece. Towards the end of the 19th century, there was a growing recognition that Breslau was losing out to other large cities in Germany because it did not have an exhibition hall where trade fairs and exhibitions could be held. 
in 1908 the construction of a hall that could be a venue for exhibitions, trade fairs, concerts, festivals and public gatherings was proposed. What we would call today an indoor arena, but something that was relatively new for those times. It was proposed that the hall should commemorate the centenary of King Friedrich Wilhelm III's proclamation to the German people Anne Mein Volk issued in 1813, a call for them to rise up against the Napoleonic occupation. This is how it came to be known as the Centennial Hall. It would be built on land owned by the city on its east side along with exhibition grounds and an expansion of the adjacent zoological gardens. Chosen to design the hall was municipal architect Max Berg. Berg decided that a circular structure with four apses would be the most suitable for the different uses envisaged for the hall. He wanted to avoid opening the structure upwards with, say, a glazed dome, and came up with the idea of a dome made up of a series of concentric rings of diminishing size, each of which was made up of vertical glazing in a steel frame. This was supported on massive reinforced concrete ribs which reached up to a height of 23 metres from the ring beam. This also helped the acoustic properties of the buildings. The dome was supported on a ring beam 19 metres high made up of four arches which allowed the apses to form part of the enclosed space. The dome was 69 metres in diameter, a huge span, much larger than the Florence Duomo, St Peter's Rome, the Pantheon or Hagia Sophia. This was a stunning feat of structural engineering for the time. Pevsner describes the supports as having an elegance of span and curvature, heralding the achievements of Pier Luigi Nervi after the Second World War. Berg had intended to, to create a cathedral of the future with his use of glass and concrete vaults. In keeping with the times, it was completely devoid of ornamentation and was intended to express the truth of the materials. This was also a period of democratisation in German society and the Centennial Hall was one of the first examples of architecture created for mass audiences, a house of democracy where people could experience the art of architecture. The building was completed in 1913. It is at the centre of exhibition grounds and is adjoined by the four domed pavilion designed by Hans Perlzig. The whole complex was designated a World Heritage Site in 2006.